During 2002, I, I found myself in Malawi, in Southeast Africa, for the first time. And I, I was there involved in emergency feeding programs, helping bring food from the cities into, into villages where people were literally uh, eating the, the leaves of trees and, and the roots of trees to survive. The, the, the previous year had been a year of, of terrible drought across the whole of Southeast Africa at one point many millions of people uh, faced starvation. And while I was there those, those months in 2002, I began thinking a bit about the, the cause of, of chronic hunger. I began thinking about the fact that, that chronic hunger isn't really caused by, by a lack of food. There's more than enough food in the world for all of us to, to eat well. Chronic hunger is caused by, by poverty. And that's something I was considering that year as we bought that food with donations in, in, in the cities and brought it into those villages where people were hungry. And during the course of the work, I, I met this family. It was a family that really changed the, the course of my life. The, the father of the family had died some time before I visited their, their home. And when I met them, the, the mother, Emma, was also dying. She had AIDS. And she said to me, as she sat there surrounded by, by her children, you know, there's only one thing left for me now, and that, that's to pray that somebody will look after my children uh, when I'm gone. And then I, I began talking to her, her oldest child, uh, sitting behind her at the back of that, that picture I took that day. And at, at one point in the conversation with Edward, I said to him, Edward, what, what's, your, what's your hopes? What, what's your ambition in, in life? He, lo he looked at me and he said, I, I'd like to have enough food to eat and I would like to be able to go to school one day. And that was it. That, that was the extent of his ambition at, at 14 years of age. And that... that plight of, of Edwards is one shared by millions of children around the world today. Around 61 million children are missing school because of poverty and, and hunger. Around 8,000 children just under the age of five are dying of, of hunger-related causes uh, every year. Around 66 million children go to school hungry. And, and that, so that's a huge, uh, a huge impact on those, on those children. It really um, traps those children in a, in a cycle of, of poverty. Girls especially uh, are likely to miss out school in, in those circumstances, perhaps um, working in the fields with their, their parents, begging on street corners, working in rubbish dumps, finding things to sell um, for, for recycling. Um, and, and they get caught up in that vicious cycle of, of poverty. We see that that, that hunger um, results in, in their health being impaired for life. Millions of children, uh, their development is stunted uh, by hunger in their, their early years of, of life. And of course, missing out on education, missing out on the possibility to learn how to, to read and write um, greatly diminishes the prospects of, the, of their lives. So in the face of that, in the face of that, that very simple answer that Edward gave me uh, that, that day and, and in the face of, of the plight of those millions of children that I've just talked about, we started a very simple project at the end of that, that famine year, the end of 2002. We called it Mary's Meals. And the project is all about providing one good meal every day in a place of education so that we meet the, the immediate need of the hungry child for food, but at the same time we always serve that food in a way that enables those children to come into the classroom and to gain that education that can set them free. I, th I think the way that we began uh, this work of, of Mary's Meals uh, is absolutely key to why it's worked and why it's grown around the world in, in the amazing way that, that it has. We recognised from the beginning that if this was going to work and last, it would have to be owned by the, by the local community more than it could ever be owned by us from, from outside. So 
the first thing that we did was that we held some public meetings and we said to the people that came, you know, we've got this idea that we would like to start serving meals in your primary school, but we'll only try to go forward with this if you believe in it, if you believe this is a good idea. Uh, and more than that, we'll only go forward with it if you're willing to, to take responsibility locally, to volunteer, to cook and serve those meals every day. And immediately the people who came to those meetings said, yes, this is, this is what we want, this is what our children need. And they began drawing up rotors to take turns to come in to volunteer their time. And then the other, the other key thing from the beginning was that as much as possible, we wanted to buy the food locally, to support the local farmer, to support the, the local economy. In, in Malawi, that meant a dish called lakuni pala, which is a corn soya blend. It's like a, a porridge uh, made of the, the maize grown in Malawi, uh, soya, small amount of sugar, and then added uh, vitamins and minerals. So a very uh, nutritious meal but all sourced from things grown and produced within uh, Malawi and very inexpensive. And so we began. Uh, the volunteers in that particular village began serving the first meals to about 200 children um, at the end of 2002. And very quickly we could see this wasn't just a nice idea. It was, it was something that was really going to change um, the lives of, of those children because almost immediately we could see that children who'd never been to school before began coming to the school because of that promise of a meal. Children who used to come just some days began coming every day. After a longer period of time, uh, the teachers reported to us that there was a, a very dramatic improvement in academic performance. Children who previously came to school too hungry uh, to learn were now able to concentrate and, and pass, their, pass their exams. So this very, very simple thing we were doing, we could see that it was having enormous uh, results. And around that very simple thing, a movement of support began to grow. First of all, here in Scotland and other parts of the UK, and then very rapidly, um, that support spread around the world. People um, volunteering to fundraise, to, to raise awareness, thousands of people donating the money required um, to, to buy the, the food uh, in country. Um, people loving this very simple thing that, that worked. And for us, that, that simplicity and that sharp focus of mission is, is really key, something we never want to lose uh, as we grow. Um, this picture is of the global HQ of Mary's Meals. It's a, a shed that I borrowed off my father um, back in 1992 to collect some aid uh, when we were helping the refugees in, in Bosnia. And I've, I've never given it back to him. And, and, but that's a, a deliberate thing as well. It's a symbol of that simplicity uh, that we want to keep and a, a recognition of the fact that when people give us donations, they do that so that we can buy food for hungry children, not, not so that we can um, build fancy offices or pay ourselves uh, high salaries. So today uh, we're feeding 1,230,171 uh, children every uh, school day across 14 uh, different countries. So Malawi, still by far the biggest project, we feed there over 30% uh, of the primary school uh, population. Uh, in, in Liberia, we have a very large project there. Liberia has one of the worst statistics in the world today for numbers of children uh, out of school. Only about 50% of Liberian children uh, ever enroll uh, in a school. So there we see particularly uh, dramatic uh, results when we begin serving the meals. Um, in Haiti, for example, we're working in the huge urban uh, slums there. Uh, and again, we see those meals bringing the children uh, off the streets uh, into school very often for the first time. Uh, in, in northern Kenya, um, working uh, with semi-nomadic uh, people, uh, pe people uh, who are really having to adapt their way of life, uh, life due to, to climate change there, and more important than ever, that their children have the opportunity uh, of, of an education. 
lots of, of, of different um, logistical um, problems to, to solve. Always trying to do that uh, as locally as possible. So uh, most often it's about moving food in country. This is a, a dugout canoe uh, taking rice across the River Maher in Liberia to one of the villages that we, that we serve there. Um, less often we have to move food in from outside the country. For example, now in the famine situation in, in South Sudan, uh, we're having to take food in from Uganda, from Kenya, sometimes even uh, flying it in. But always, all these years, um, we've always found a way. We've always found a way to keep our promise when we begin those projects and to serve the meals every day. And that, that promise is really important for us, that promise to the communities, that promise to the children. Uh, because when they can trust in that, they, they keep coming um, and, it, and it changes their lives. And, and one thing that's very important for us as this work goes on is that we see that, um, that we, we need to build a body of evidence to show that this, that this works. Uh, it's not just something that we talk about. So we spend a, that we talk about in terms of stories or anecdotes. It's something um, that is really uh, working in terms of increased enrollment, increased attendance rates, and, and so on. One impact we see is huge improvements in agriculture. Just simply by saying to farmers that we can buy their produce, um, it enables them to invest in their farms. In, in Liberia also, every school that takes part in our mission, we say to them, they have to start a school farm now and begin to contribute towards the project that way also. And we see the governments now, the Malawian government, now have a policy of school feeding for the first time. And they say publicly they've done that because they see the impact of Mary's Meals in their country. And I'll just finish with Veronica. Veronica is now in university studying finance, someone who speaks with great hope about the future of her country and her own future. Turns out Veronica was amongst the first group of 200 children we ever fed back in 2002, an orphan who went sometimes a week without food at home, who said she never would have gone to school without her meals. So our vision is that every child in this world should at least be able to eat one good meal every day in their place of education. And I believe that's possible. Thank you.